Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk about the notion of expectation values. We're going to introduce this idea. It's going to come up over and over again in the rest of the course. And it's how we relate uh, observable quantities in quantum mechanics to their operators through the probability density. So. So expectation values. We're going to introduce this in this section mostly in the context of the square well, which has kind of been the strategy up to this point to introduce a lot of general context in the, con in the context of the square well. But I'm going to explicitly point out how these are much more general as we go along with this. So expectation values. Remember that uh, we, when we were looking at the, uh, at the physical interpretation of the wave function, what it was useful for, and what it meant for a particle to be, quantum particle to be moving around in the square well, we introduced the idea of the average position. So that's a very natural thing to do in this case. We have the position operator, which is just multiplication by x, multiplied by the probability density for the particle to be at position x at time t integrated over the domain. That's the average position so, and synonymously that's referred to the, as the expectation value of x or the expected value of x. And that has a nice form that uh, we'll point out has a uh, very generalizable form later on. So that's position. Remember our three observables at this point are position, momentum, and total energy. So let's define the expectation value of momentum to be the mass times the time derivative of the expectation value of x. Now, we have a nice theorem which relates this definition 23 to the integral form for that we used in describing the expectation value of x in equation 2.108. So that says that if the particle is in the state psi of xt, then the expected value of momentum in that state is, we take the complex conjugate of the particular state psi bar, we put the momentum operator minus i h bar d by dx in between and let it act on the state psi and integrate it over their domain. So the idea now is we want to prove that 2.110 is the same as 2.109. So How do you do that? Well, the obvious thing to do is to uh, differentiate the expectation value of position that we gave above. Use definition 23 and prove that this integral is the same. So rather than writing out mod psi of xt squared, we write it is x psi psi bar. And then we differentiate it with respect to time using the product rule. We can take it under the integral sign with no problem because the endpoints don't depend upon time and it's a nice finite integral. And that's what we've done here. Now what we have are two time derivatives of psi bar and psi but this is an integral over x. So how do we represent those general time derivatives in terms of spatial derivatives? Well, through the, with the Schrodinger equation, because the time derivative of the wave function can be expressed in terms of space, spatial derivatives. Now I've gone ahead and left a v in here, even though it's zero for uh, 
the square well, but just uh, for generality at the moment. And then we can take the complex conjugate of the expression 2.112. We substitute those into the integral expression 2.111. Now go ahead and put in v equals zero because this, we're doing this calculation for the square well. And we have this expression. Now, what we need to do is apply theorem six. Theorem six was, we, we've referred to as, as hermeticity. This was a, the condition of self-adjointness on the general Hamiltonian corresponding to the square well. If we apply theorem 6 to the first integral in the expression, this expression, okay, remember we get that, we use the product rule, combine terms, I know I did this rather quickly, but uh, you can go back and verify that this is true, and we get this last latter expression, which is the result that we were trying to prove. Okay, this was done for the square well, but it's important to realize that the proof used only the Schrodinger equation and hermeticity, nothing else. Now we can generalize this, this uh, result to higher dimensions and more general settings if we have a, uh, if we're in D dimensions and we have a state psi of x and t representing the system, then the expectation value of momentum in that situation is the same form. Psi bar, momentum operator h bar over i, grad psi, in this case, grad, now acting on psi. Now, this next statement is, it seems kind of like a throwaway statement, and, but in some sense it, it's not because it gives you considerable insight. This result is consistent with the observation we made earlier after we derived the probability current that h bar over i grad acting on psi is the quantum mechanical equivalent to momentum acting on psi. So consistent, meaning that's what the, imp the, the expression looks like for the expectation value in this case. Okay, now what about energy? That's our third observable that we've spent a lot of time with, position, momentum, and ener total energy. Well, for the square well, expectation value of energy for the system in the state, psi of x and t, we have psi bar. We put the energy operator in between psi bar and psi and integrate it over the domain. Well, for the energy operator, so V is zero for the square well, that's psi bar I H bar D by DT acting on psi. This is important to relate these two. So we can use that result to rederive something that we we've already seen earlier in the square well. We know that we can represent a general state as a linear combination of eigenfunctions of the time independent Schrodinger equation psi n of x each of those multiplied by e to the minus i e n t over h bar where e n is the eigen value corresponding to the eigenfunction or eigenstate psi n. Now we know those eigenfunctions are orthogonal. If we take this expression, plug it into 2.118, plug it into the expression above, it, and I'm leaving this as a s exercise for you, it's easy to see, I want you to get to the point <laughs> where it, it, it actually is easy to see, that the expectation value of, it, of the energy in this general state, 
is a weighted sum of eigenvalues e sub n, where the weighting mod c n squared is the amplitude of each of the contributions of the stationary states describing the square well. Okay, very nice result. And this can be generalized um, to general Hamiltonians. We're just looking at one, at, um, one a single particle, but the, for n dimensions, the expectation value of E has the same form as psi bar energy operator acting on psi, but the energy operator is ih bar d by dt. Same integral expression. Okay, that's it for the introduction to expe expectation values. We're going to see them mostly in chapter 3 now, but now we're going to we're going to transition to one of the most interesting uh, phenomena, quantum phenomena that we're going to encounter in scattering and tunneling in this course. Okay, so I will see you all next time. Bye.